This is the new Mercedes AMG GLE 63 S. It's basically their family friendly SUV and they've put a rocket up its ass. And I'll show you just how powerful the rocket is because I'm going to launch it and time it from 0 to 60 and over the standing quarter mile. And I'll be testing its brakes as well to make sure that it won't kill you. I'm also going to talk you around the car today about the upgrades over the standard GLE, both inside and out, what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the price. So this AMG GLE 63S starts from around £112,000. <sighs> It's quite a lot of money. However, if you haven't got quite that much cash, but you still want a performance SUV, I found a good offer on one through CarWow. If you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can see what the car is and the saving. Alternatively, if you just want to check out the best deals on all the latest new cars, you can go to CarWow by simply Googling, help me CarWow. My team and I help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Let's talk through the design upgrades that you get on this MG version of the GLE over the standard car. So obviously there's the badging, so that everyone knows it's the high performance version. Then there's a deeper, more sporty rear bumper, look, with diffusory bits on there. <coughs> They're not really diffusing much. And then the AMG tailpipes, they do that thing where it's a little bit of a fake. Well, inside, look, you can see the real exhaust pipes inside. These are just enhancements, like putting socks down your pants to make you look bigger than you actually are. I've never done that. Never. I've done that. No, I haven't. I haven't. From the side, visual upgrades include flared wheel arches, 22-inch alloy wheels. You can only get them in black. You've got red brake calipers. You've got your V8 bi-turbo 4-matic there as well. You also get these running boards, a standard, which is good. And then you get the door mirrors, the roof bars, and the rear windows blacked out to make it look meaner. Here at the front, the biggest upgrade is this. It's the giveaway, really. The AMG slatted grille does look cool. And you've got a redesigned, sportier, more aggressive, lower front bumper as well. And these are actual air intakes there as well to cool the radiators. You've also got these power domes in the bonnet. And as standard, you get multi-beam LED headlights. Really is very, very aggressive looking, very German. Now, if you're German watching this and you'd like to watch reviews in German, we have a CarWow Germany channel. Click on the pop-out banner up there to go check it out and subscribe there as well for the German me. Das ist gut, ja. Very good. Now let's talk about the chassis upgrades over the standard GLE. So you get active air suspension as standard. When you have the car in its sportier setting, it sits 10 millimeters lower to the ground than the normal GLE. You've also got adaptive dampers as well, so you can alter the comfort levels. The car also has 48 volt active anti-roll bars, so that'll stop it leaning in the corners, keep it nice and flat. The four wheel drive system can send up to 100% of the engine's torque to the rear wheels, and you've got a limited slip differential at the back as well to make sure the wheel with the most grip is sent the most power for improved corner exiting traction. You've also got variable ratio steering so when you're maneuvering you don't have to do too much wheel twirling yet when you're driving quickly it still remains nice and responsive and steady. Anyway let's see what this car is like to drive by taking it for a spin on a twisty road. And let's see what this GLE 63S is like when you want to have some fun. I'm gonna put the gearbox into manual and I'm gonna turn this dial to go into sports plus mode but then I'm gonna press this button because I don't want the suspension in its firmest setting I'm gonna go in the middle setting. Let's do this. Oh yes, what a great noise. It certainly hauls ass this thing, but does it go around corners? <laughs> That's the collision warning system because I was heading to the armco there and it thought I wasn't gonna turn, but I did. I tell you what, the steering is pretty nice on this. It helps that you've got that Alcantara covering on the steering wheel, it just makes it feel sporty. But you can get an idea of what the front wheels are doing. Obviously, being an SUV, you're hamstrung by weight and the high center of gravity, but it grips and it certainly fires you out of corners. You just gotta watch it when you're going into them a little bit too quickly. Balance the car, but you can drive this as quick as you ever should be allowed to drive any car on the road, no problem. It doesn't lean much, actually. Look, I'm just chucking into the bends. It's surprisingly good. Yes, you shouldn't be having this much fun in something this big and heavy, really. You can. Before I launch the car to show you how quick it is to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile, I'm gonna talk you through the upgrades you get on the inside of this GLE 63 over the standard car. So you've got an AMG sports steering wheel with fine apple leather and Alcantara. You also have the controls there for your driving mode so you can toggle between comfort, sport and so on and so forth. And then you can toggle between other settings here using this other paddle. Really handy, dead easy to use when you're driving. 
Other upgrades include the AMG sports seats, which are ventilated, they're heated, they even have a massage function and they are very, very comfy yet supportive. You also get carbon fiber here on the dash, which is nice. Then there are aluminum pedals, you've got AMG mats, AMG on the kick plate. So you've got AMG specific dials with lots of different information that you're never gonna look at. And then the rest of the car is fully loaded. So you've got ambient lighting as standard. You've also got a Burmester sound system and parent glass roof, which I'll just open now. There it is, look. It's nice. It just takes forever for that to go back. And now I'm blinded by the sun. It's almost done. Almost. That's it. Let's go. Oh yeah, people, it's time to talk about the engine. So it's a four litre twin turbo V8 with 612 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque. Hand built by a man called Mark Stutz. It's the first time I've ever been able to read one of the signatures from the engine builder guys from our filter back. They're normally just like, eh, like that. Anyway, it drives all four wheels via a nine speed torque converter automatic gearbox. Let's see how quick Mark's engine is, shall we? This car's supposed to do 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, but let's find out what it'll really do. So I've got my specialist timing gear here. I'm gonna launch it, it's dead easy. You can do it in pretty much every mode apart from comfort, but I'm gonna do it in race and with the stability and ESP sport. So it'll give me a bit of slip. Lift on the brake. Floor the throttle, build up boost, let go. It's quick. Whoa, what a noise. 3.67 to 60. What's the quarter mile? What is the quarter mile? Come on. 11.95. So what's a bit odd though, I thought it would have a proper launch control mode, but it doesn't seem to. Lift on the brake again. Nope. No, it doesn't. I've got 3.6 then to 60. That was even quicker. When you've got a car this big and this powerful, you're going to need some big brakes. So you've got 400 millimeter discs up front, gripped by six piston calipers, 370 millimeters at the back, gripped by one piston calipers. And if that's not enough for you, you can get common ceramics as an option. So let's find out what these standard brakes are like in a brake test. All right then, let's see how good these brakes are. How well can they stop this big beast of an SUV? Let's do this. Full emergency stop from 70 miles an hour. Here we go, brake test now. I'm literally just standing on that brake. <laughs> what did we get? Let's have a look here. 44 meters from 70 miles an hour for this big beast. That's a fairly decent stopping distance. Now, if you wanna see how that compares to the E63S, put a link up there, click on that pop-out banner, you can watch my in-depth video review of that car and check out all its performance testing. Let's move on. One of the great things about this car is that while you have that wonderful AMG performance, you've also got good old GLE practicality. So a huge boot, 630 litres of space. And if you think that's a bit high, it's like this thing's in and out of, don't worry. You actually just lower it down on its air suspension. Lower, lower, go lower. Is it going lower? Oh, it is. Had to think about it. Just need some encouragement. Good jelly. Get down now. Get down. There we go. Look, easier. The practicality extends to the back seats. Look how much room I've got. I can just you know, sprawl around back here. Look. And I'm reminded that it is the jelly 63 version because you've got some sporty bits on the seat. Look, the grippy Alcantara. You've got the lovely headlining and the carbon fibre here in the rear as well. Hmm. There's some problem though. The normal GLE, you can get it with seven seats, not this AMG version. And that brings me on to five annoying things about this car. I thought I was gonna get through this entire review without having to deploy the car wire stick of truth, but I've just spotted these, so come on, bring on the stick. No, 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 wait, that, wait, wait that, that's overkill, that's, that's too big. Can we have the um, car wire precision stick of truth? Because we've got some very little vents that we need to check. There we go, look, just need to just, Prove these aren't real. Look, I can get in the gap, but it doesn't go any further. Ah, oh, exposed. Yeah, you don't get this level of scrutiny in the auto car road test. If you're wondering why this car doesn't have launch control, it's because unlike the E63S, which has a multi-clutch gearbox, this has a torque converter gearbox. And for some reason, they can't do launch control with that. No other manufacturers are able to do it, such as Audi in the RSQ8. But I don't think I'm an Audi fanboy, because look, look. Look at this, yeah, see? Paint colours are pretty limited on this car. So there's 10 available, but only two are standard. That's flat white, I'm not talking about the coffee, or flat black, that's not even a thing. But 
you get the idea. This car's a little bit heavy. It weighs in at 2,365 kilos, which isn't especially massive for a car of this size, but it is 65 kilos heavier than a key rival, the BMW X5 M. And if you'd like to see me drive that car across America and do some very American things with it, and even ride a horse and talk like a cowboy. And I got me one whole horsepower ride here. Click on the pop-out banner up there to watch that video. It's very strange, very strange. Check it out. AMGs sound amazing, but they need to be driving for you to experience them because you're not allowed to rev them fully when you're stationary to show off to your friends. Look, it's got a soft limiter at 4,000 RPM. This is the exhaust in its loudest setting as well. It's more like a big cat purring. Yeah. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. This JLE 63 is the first AMG with a V8 engine to get Mercedes EQ Boost mild hybrid system. So you've got a little electric motor which puts out 22 horsepower. It can give a little bit of a boost when you're pulling away and it allows a stop start system to be more efficient. Which is probably why this car, despite its size and its performance, is averaging an okay 22 miles per gallon. Yeah. This car is fitted with active engine mounts so it stops the engine fin all vibrate when you're just cruising along but then they tighten up when you're going through the corners to stop it acting like a pendulum and destroying the handling. You get two AMG specific off-road modes. One is trail which is designed for boggy fields so if you're in the overflow car park at Polo and it's a bit rainy and then there is sand which is if you're going blasting over sand dunes in the Middle East. How do you make your caravan go from 0 to 60 in under five seconds? Easy you fix it to this thing you see this GLE 63 despite being a performance SUV is still a workhorse it can tow 3.5 tons though I'm not entirely sure how you attach the tow bar it's not my problem if you're not as lucky as me to be able to own your own specialist timing gear don't worry if you've got the Mercedes GLE 63s because you have the track pace app built into the car. So look, you've got a drag race there, so you can measure your 0 to 60 and your quarter mile times. There's also a track race mode where you can time yourself around various tracks and there's lots of them preset. Look, that was Silverstone and let's see if it's got it set per. Uh, yeah, look, Spa has got that in as well. Brilliant. The car is even fitted with onboard cameras and you can use them like a dash cam, but then you can look at the footage back through an app on your phone to see how you're done driving around a track so you can improve your lines when you drive around. Isn't that clever? Right, let's see what this AMG GLE 63 is like around town and at lower speeds. So I'm driving on a little city course here on our test facility. I've got the car's air suspension in its softest setting and it's still got a slight firm edge to it, you know, it's the AMG car, so it should let you know that it's sporty, but it's not uncomfortable, it deals with bumps absolutely fine. Let's try over a speed hump, see what it's like. That's yeah, fine over speed humps as well. Do you know what? While this car's suspension is pretty comfy, I don't think it goes over bumps quite as well as an Audi RS Q8. And to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there. And the steering's light enough when you have to do lots of manoeuvres and the turning circle isn't all that bad for a big car. Look at that. And even though it is big, because you're sat up high, it's quite easy to tell where the corners of the car are. The view at the back's all right as well. The only problem is that these pillars create massive blind spots. They really do. Can't fault the gearbox though. It's really good at just blending the gears together. And, I don't know if you noticed this, there's this little meter there which shows when you're using the electrical assistance from the mold hybrid system. To be fair, if it wasn't for that little gauge there saying when the motor is working, you'd have no idea. <laughs> there was one fitted to this car, you can't tell at all. That does bring me around to the brakes though, because obviously when you're braking, you're recharging the battery for that little hybrid system and that motor. But you can't feel that either. The brake pedal has a slight squidgy feel to it at first, but it's not grabby. And then as you pile on the pressure, you do get good braking performance for such a heavy car. It's easy to drive around town this, no problem. Let's try it on a faster road. Okay, let's see what this car's like on the motorway. I'm cruising at 50, car's in comfort. It's got nine gears, this automatic gearbox. Let's see how it copes when I kick down, try to overtake all of a sudden. So it's in eighth at the moment at 50, so I'm gonna floor it. A little bit of a hesitation. It's like, which gear, which gear, which gear? And then it suddenly figures it out and you take off because boy, can this four liter twin turbo V8 Pull. Now what I'm going to do, I'll put the car into Sport Plus mode now. I'm going to do a roll from 50 miles an hour in third gear. See how this engine really pulls. Look at that. 
Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what a noise as well. Sounds like a blooming World War II fighter plane, doesn't it? German one, obviously. Anyway, let's get back into comfort because that's what you're going to be doing when you're just driving along on the motorway, aren't you? And it was just for fun. Now when you're just cruising at 70, this is very relaxing actually. Suspension's great. Yeah, suspension just floats over crests. The seats, they're supportive. You get a good view. There's not much wind noise, a little bit of tire noise, but then you have got huge fat tires. This car's got the automated cruise control, so I'm gonna just whack that on and it'll auto steer and keep me a safe distance from the car in front. This is great for just munching at the miles. Look, no hands, no, you shouldn't do that. I'm, I want a closed road, but you should never take your hands off the steering wheel. Look, if you do take your hands off the steering wheel, it get cross and disengage and you don't want that. But now you can just chill and just let the miles pass by. That's boring, let's go have some fun. So then what's my final verdict on the Mercedes AMG GLE 63 S? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon if you're looking for a practical yet usable SUV with just bonkers performance, you should shortlist this because it really is an impressive machine that's actually easy to live with every day, as long as you can afford the fuel bills, of course. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Let me know some of the videos you'd like me to record. In the comments below, I do check those out. If you click on there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can get a car wow. It'll help you buy your perfect car.